The Northwest Film Festival is now taking entries for 2014. This is Adrian. This is my business partner Grant. Hi guys. We are a production company called IXL Film, which we locally operate in the Kurindai area. We love being a part of film festivals, which is the reason why the Northwest Film Festival will mean so much to us. It gives people like you the opportunity to be able to create and show your visions. Get to work with some industry professionals and also pick up some old, uh, skills along the way. Hi. Give them a wave. What we're about to show you is what you could do to enter the film festival. Uh, some lighting techniques, some interesting things. And maybe do something for the lay drinking. Alright, see you later. But, this way? Okay. Given the opportunity to take part in a unique culture experience and have a lot of fun along the way, there are different videos and films that you can use to enter into the film festival. We'll show you some and how to create the same results. It ranges from live action footage. Animation, including 2D. 3D design and incorporation. And even stop frame. When it comes to filming, just remember you are only limited by your own imagination. You can film wherever your heart desires. For me, for example, we're filming in the beautiful town of Corindai in the main street. And please, no filming of illegal activities. The Northwest Film Festival is now taking entries for 2014 and we encourage everyone to give it a go. Even if you've never made a film before, the following demonstrations will show you how easy it is to make a film and give you some ideas on how to make an award-winning film. When it comes to using Stop Go Animation, there is a couple of things that you need to uh, have. First things first, you need to have your star of the show. In this case, it's Mr. Blue Tonka Truck. You need to have your camera and you need to have your scene set. So pretty much what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a picture just like this then I'm going to move it forward a little bit, take another picture, and then forward a little bit more, take another picture, a little bit more, and take a picture. And when we put that all together, it's going to give the illusion that the car's moving, when in fact it's just a lot of individual pictures put together after each other. So I'll go through and finish doing this, and then we'll see the result. Now that you've seen what the, the footage ends up like, um, feel free to move your camera around and do, uh, do other positions. But also remember, if you've got access to a tripod, use one of these. These are very good. They'll keep your camera completely still and then you won't have to worry about movement at all. If not, and you want to hold on to it, find a comfortable, comfortable spot and just try and hold it as still as possible when shooting. So say for an example, I do this. I'm resting it against my leg. Move it across and continue. Okay, when it comes to doing your stop frame animation, you can use many programs. The program that I'm using is Windows Movie Maker, and a program that comes with a lot of windows, and they're pretty much the same with small variations depending on what version that you have. Alright, so first things first, we have to get our footage, so where it says click here to browse, browse for your footage. Alright, so what you do is you find the exact location where your footage is. Alright, and then the next step what you do from there is you get all the footage that you want. So if you want every every bit of footage selected, you select your first one, scroll down to the bottom one, select all of it, hit open, and now you'll see all your footage is in here. 
but one thing you'll notice if we do hit play the footage isn't moving because each clip is set to about seven seconds which is quite long so the first thing that we do is we go across up top here to the edit tab and where it says duration we want to get that as small as possible and the smallest that we can get is 0 0.1 make sure you oh, first things first make sure you have all of these selected you can do that by holding control and hit A or we can go to the home tab all the way across to select all so we'll do it for 0.1 and then now if you see when you hit play the animation has started a couple of shots in here that I don't need so I'm just going to go through and do a quick trim on what I, what I do and don't need get rid of the files that you don't need by clicking on them and hitting the delete key or right click and then go remove. I'll also you can hold shift and select your first one and select your bottom one that you want and it will select every single one in between. You can tell the ones that are selected by the blue box around the outside. So I'm just going to go through and delete that and there you have it. Alright, so the last step is to save the movie. So what you want to do is you want to come across to the Home tab and go all the way across to Save Movie. And what you want to do is you don't want to just click the button. You want to click down here and then you've got all these settings to go through. Uh, the best thing to do is if you've got the, the options to go YouTube, I'd click on that link. But if not, just go for high High Quality or whatever it says is the highest quality. So I'll click on this one for YouTube and it'll now ask you to save it where you'd like to save it. So I'm going to save this one as Car Stop Go. And then the next thing it'll do, it will start making a movie. Okay, when it's complete, it'll ask you if you wish to play it. So I'm going to click play. When lighting, don't shoot your subject with the sun behind them. This will make their faces dark and create what is known as lens flares. Don't shoot directly into the sun. This is not good for the cameras and can damage them. What is exposure? Well, exposure is how much light is getting let into the camera. If you, have, if you let in too much light, then your, your shot will be overexposed like this. If the camera is not letting in enough light, then it'll be underexposed, looking dark like this. Some cameras have an automatic iris function, which is a device that will control how much light is let into the camera. But beware, if a camera does not have an auto iris function, or you have to control it manually, make sure you adjust it. If you're not sure, play back the file that you just recently recorded and have a look. It only takes a few seconds to change the mistake. We're now going to show you some videos from Jason, who is also known as the Pocket Filmmaker, showing you a little bit more about how to do a stop go animation and also about Pocket Filmmaking. Hi, welcome back everyone. This time on Pocket Filmmaker, we're going to have a look at some basics of stop frame animation and how to get you started. Now, when we think of animation, we normally think of two extremes, either a blockbuster visual effects masterpiece from Hollywood or traditional cartoon style animation with handcrafted characters. Essentially, stop frame animation is the process of recording a lot of still pictures into one video or film sequence. Our eyes are easily fooled and we see animation as the end result. In fact, Think back to flickbook animations and you'll know that you don't actually even need a camera to create the illusion of motion pictures. So how can we make animation on our smartphones? There's lots of apps that help you stitch together still images to create pocket animations and some with quite professional recording features too, but we're going to learn more about those in a minute. Vine was launched recently as Twitter's answer to social video sharing. And you know what? It's really simple but very powerful. Download the free app to your iPhone, create a user profile and simply start shooting. The camera window doesn't even have any buttons. Simply touch the screen to record and lift your finger to pause, then touch the screen again to keep going. 
It records to a six second looping video file and with a little practice and patience, you can create some animation clips this very same way. Now to get started, simply make sure your iPhone is on a tripod or a holder so it remains nice and sturdy. Next, fire up Vine and frame your animation surface, in this case, a simple whiteboard. Draw your first picture, then lightly touch the screen to record a very short slice of video, like a frame. Next, change the picture by adding or altering part of your drawing, then repeat the process to record the next section of frames. Eventually, you're going to end up with six seconds of hand-drawn animation that you can truly call your own. There's many great little apps to help you record animations and stop-motion photography on your phone. Here's a few of my personal favourites. Miniatures is an app that turns everyday scenes into time-lapse miniature settings thanks to clever use of soft focus areas, giving the impression of very shallow depth of field. You can choose a variety of different intervals between recording frames, plus a number of detailed image control variables too. Very powerful and great fun to play with, so long as you can keep your smartphone nice and steady during recording. Animation Creator Express is a powerful stop motion drawing app, which gives you impressive control over your finger drawn artwork. And the version I'm using here is completely free. Great for learning the basics behind how to draw objects in motion and to share them with your social networks easily too. Stop Motion Studio is the answer if you're into claymation or filming your stop motion sequences. Now it allows you to see the previous frame you've shot and position your new movement in relationship to that, which is a really powerful feature and simple enough for kids to understand and use too. Bring on a rainy day. Well there you have it. If you haven't tried creating your own animations yet, hopefully I've inspired you to give it a shot. Thanks again for watching, happy animating, and see you next time. Hi, I'm Jason Van Genderen. I'm known as the Pocket Filmmaker, and I've compiled today these six pocket filmmaking tips to help you shoot better quality movies uh, at home with nothing more than your mobile phone. Now to start with, tip number one is actually a really common mistake a lot of people do when they're filming with their mobile phones, and that is screen orientation. So when you're actually shooting your video, if you hold your camera this way, the chances are you'll be shooting video in portrait mode, which means when you put it on your computer or on your TV screen, you get those big black bars by the side of your picture, and your picture is very long, tall and skinny. So remember to turn your camera around to a landscape format and make sure you shoot your, your video in the same aspect as the screen in which you're going to watch it on. Okay, now if you've got really, really shaky hands when you're holding one of these, these camera devices to film with, you're not alone. Lots of people do. So tip number two is just for you. When you're holding the camera, remember, screen orientation, landscape. Most people tend to hold it away from their body like this, like it's a foreign object, and they try and hold it way away just to see the screen. And what happens is your arm ends up acting like a massive lever. So any vibration that goes along your, your arm is picked up by the phone and it's accentuated, okay? So tip number two is really, really simple, and that is just keep your camera closer to your body. If you, if you bring your arms back in like this and tuck your elbows into your body, it's a far more steady picture. And if in doubt, use both hands to steady the shot. Okay, now tip number three, a really, really simple one, and that is ban the zoom. If it's one function I could ban on all mobile phone cameras, it would be the digital zoom. Now keep in mind when people use a digital zoom, it doesn't matter whether you've got a two times zoom or a six times or an eight times digital zoom, they're not optical, so they're not using the glass and the lens to enlarge the picture. They're actually utilizing the pixels that you're capturing the picture with and just enlarging those. So the picture quality is no better. In fact, it's worse. So if you're gonna zoom in on something, Use your body, use your camera, move into the object. If I'm going to film this particular camera, I'm going to move into the camera like this and then move back again to show it. It's a far more interesting shot and your audience will thank you for it. And tip number four is to vary your shots. Now believe it or not, it's a really, really common mistake people make when they stand there and they're filming Christmas at home or the holidays or something like that and that is you just stand there in the one spot like you're a tree rooted to the ground and you just stand there and you film and you film and you film and you might be filming for a couple of minutes and it's okay while well, you're actually capturing the action you've got everything else happening in the background but as soon as you take that film home and you try to show other people they'll just find standing there in that one position for four or five minutes is way too long and really really boring so when I say vary the shots go and show a wide shot so stand back and film the whole scene that you're trying to capture and then go in and show individual things within the scene. So, um, for instance, if you're filming the unwrapping at, at Christmas time of all the presents, stand back in the room, show all the family gathered around the tree, show them ripping the paper off, nice big wide scene, and then come in really nice and tight and film hands on presents, ripping off paper or ribbons or sticky tape. Um, then, you know, 
pull a camera up and look at someone's expression when they've just opened up something, um, then someone else's reaction to that. And maybe it's a toy that's unwrapped on the floor that's being played with. So think about all the little things within the scene as well as the big picture and make sure you try and show all of those things together, not just the one boring steady shot. Okay, now tip number five is to keep talking. Now when I say keep talking, if you're filming a video yourself, particularly if you're family at Christmas time, um, you're in a perfect position to be able to narrate. Um, so you know when you, when you often film a, a video clip and you play it back to family afterwards on the television or on the computer and there's nothing being spoken and so you, you feel like you need to narrate over the top of it as you're watching the, the video back. Now you can imagine every time you play it having to do that, it gets pretty tiresome. So the great thing to do is to save yourself the energy when you're filming and you're filming a scene in front of you, you're only you know, 10, 15 centimeters away from the actual camera. So start talking, talk over the top of what you're recording and give people a bit of a sense of the place and what's going on for all time's sake. So whenever you play this clip back, you're gonna hear your story told exactly the same way at that moment as you're recording it. It's a really, really simple tip and it works really, really well. Now my final tip for creating fantastic little home movies this Christmas is for those who've got a fear of editing. Okay. Now, editing is a bit of a craft, so not everybody's got the skills or the want to be able to do uh, an edit job on their particular home video. So there's two ways you can approach it. Now, the first way you could do it is to just record what we call a one-shot wonder, which is let's try and record the whole scene or the whole activity that you're trying to capture in the one shot. And that will work if you remember those two other tips I just spoke about, which is vary your shot size. So show the big scene, then come in and show smaller things within the scene as well. And the other thing to do then is to narrate, narrate over the top of it. So remember to keep talking and explaining the action and what's going on. For those that are a little bit more adventurous, um, if you're filming on a device like an iPhone, there's, there's literally hundreds and hundreds of video editing apps that you can now get, some which are for free, um, to download, which will allow you to combine um, the video that you've shot and some still photos as well, and even some music, and put together a really, really simple edited um, film clip. Now one of these apps that's uh, really really cracking and, and very popular out there is called Videolicious. So I'll uh, put that up on the bottom of this screen at the moment. Videolicious allows you to go exactly through your video clips and your photos, select which ones you want to use. You can select a template or a theme for the edit um, and it allows you to choose some music from your iTunes library as well to, to compile with the clip. And you just press a button within like two minutes you've rendered out a, a, an edited video clip which is really cool. So two things to keep in mind, one is the one shot wonder, if you want to try and film something all in the one, vary your shot size and narrate over the top of your video as, you, as you, you're recording. And the second thing, if you want to be a bit adventurous, try Videolicious, um, it's a fantastic little app for the iPhone, um, you'll have heaps of fun with it. That's it for me, that's my top six tips for helping you get a cracking home movie together this Christmas. Um, now remember, you can follow my blog uh, to uh, keep in touch with all the latest things with pocket filmmaking, or else if you're interested in anything like these little groovy lenses that I use, these magnetic lenses to attach to the, the front of your phone um, to give you different sorts of shot sizes and all these kooky different covers and things I've got, um, you can jump onto my online store, pocketfilmmaker.com.au, and you can get those easily through there. Have a fantastic Christmas, enjoy your filmmaking, get out your phone, remember these six tips and you'll have some awesome Christmas videos to remember for a long, long time.
Once you have your video all exported and ready to go, the next step is to put it up on YouTube. What you're going to need to do first is make sure you have a YouTube account. So my one here is called Hashtag Grant. And pretty much what you need to do from this situation is if you don't have one, you need to go in and create one. But if you do, all you need to do is hit this little button up here called the Upload button and it will take you to the next page. So the very first thing you do is you need to either drag your file across, put it in, or click and open open your file. Okay, now that you've got your file, the next step is to go in there. Alright, so first things first, you don't have to make this video public. You can make it unlisted, but don't make it private because if you make it private no one can see it. Unlisted means that the only way anyone can see it is by looking at this, this URL. This is the URL that you will need to copy and send off with your applications. Alright, so the next step is to name it, so I'm going to call it Grants Car Stop Motion. Put a description in there if you want, and some tags. Tags just allow people to help search, but because it's an unlisted video, there's no need for it. So, Alright, stop frame animation for Northwest Film Festival. And this bar will come across the top, and pretty much when it's done, what will happen is you'll have this address here that you'll need to copy. So you can do that by either selecting the whole thing like that and right clicking on it and go and copy, or Control C will work as well. And all you do is you put that into your browser, and then when you search for it, it will be that video. At the moment, it hasn't been hasn't been finished yet so this will be just uh, showing you this screen saying it hasn't been done so what you do is we sit and we wait for that to finish okay when it's done it's going to ask you to click done to confirm so you click done that'll save the changes and now this will be your 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 web address for the video Hopefully now you have some great ideas on how to make a movie. For more information, check out the Northwest Film Festival website. Bye from now for the Northwest Film Festival and the IXL Film Team, and good luck.